Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A podcast here on Inside the Birds YouTube channel. I am Jason Avant, former wide receiver, Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm here with my teammate, my main man, Quentin Michael. Quentin, say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back. Uh, you know, we got a lot to talk about, but this is glad to be back, and, and it's always a blessing to be able to hop on and, and talk football and Eagles ball with my homie. So let's let's get it. <laughs> yeah, we're we're excited about that. To everyone that's tuning in, thank you guys for choosing the Q and A podcast for information. Hopefully, it's entertaining for you guys as well. We want to thank everyone at Inside the Birds, Jeff and Adam and Josh and. Hunter and everyone that's responsible in the background for making this show possible. And to you, the fans who are tuning in, thank you for all the questions that we receive on social media and everything that you send to inside the birds at gmail.com. Again, inside the birds at gmail.com. We'll be able to get to your questions uh, at some point during the season. There's a lot of um, content because the games are going on, but we want to say thank you guys for submitting those. Q, another heartbreaker, another. Uh, thrashing, if you will. <laughs> uh, disappointment for me. But I want you to talk about your overall opinion. Like the state of the franchise, the state of the union, the state of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're here at two and five. Uh, we've lost to some good teams. We've had some winnable games. We haven't played well at all most of the season. What do you think when you're watching these games? The, the biggest the biggest thing um, that I notice and that I feel from the entire like organization from the top to the bottom is it just doesn't feel like there's a, a plan. Mm. Like, I feel like there's no game plan, feels like there's no no overall plan, no overall vision for this team. And, um, you know, it could be possibly listen, this is the year that we're going to have, we're going to go through it and then start to rebuild. I'm, I'm not sure, but right now watching the games, it just feels like everything is just kind of on, on the cusp. Like it just feels like everything's just kind of thrown together. And, um, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's really, it's really frustrating because yeah, although I do think that this team is young and they, they, they need to grow and, and learn, I still think that they can win some of these games. Like, I think they can beat Las Vegas. I think they're a, a good enough team to compete with with Las Vegas and a couple other games. And and so it's really, really frustrating and disheartening when, you know, we tune in and, and we're all excited for the game. And then, you know, it's like, what is this? You know, it's, it's just really yeah. odd, odd to me. There was, there was some plays in the game. And I'm not going to get to the plays in the game. I agree with you. Like, I don't know if I've been more frustrated doing a football game from some of the mistakes that we made, some simple things that could have changed the outcome of the game, just like day one coaching decisions, day one, um, you know, just te technical te technique things that could could have changed some of the outcome of the game. Because you remember, don't look at the score going into the third quarter or halftime or so on and so forth. You always two or three plays away from being right in the game because momentum shifts based on those situations. Yeah. And if, okay. if a team has a positive play, that momentum carries, just like it was when Gainwell fumbled right before halftime. That fumble changes the, the entire game, right? And they begin yep. to gain strength and power after that, and it was too much. It was too much of an avalanche. And uh, so, but you get frustrated. Now, there are things that we still don't know. And I think we're starting to get the real picture. I think I think people's minds and decisions are starting to be made. Do we have a starting quarterback? Most people will say they don't know or they're sure that Jalen is not the starter at this point. They're going to say one of those two things. I don't know, but either you're going to be I don't know or he's not a starter in the league, right? That's not a good thing. Do we have a solid head coach that we can win around, right? So. That's another thing. You're going to say, I don't know, or no, he's not the man. There's nothing that's trending in the positive. Do we have a solid defensive coordinator? They're going to say, no, no. They're probably going to say, no, period. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. so when, you, when you look at all of these things, nothing is trending upward. Now, you may take some individual players and say these players are, are trending in the right direction, 
But as a whole, as an organization, as a whole, we're not trending in the right direction. And that's sad. That's even if even when you have a rebuild, there should be things that you look at that's like, oh, I see the plan coming together. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't see the plan coming together right now. And if the plan is Deshaun Watson, that plan is not the best. We don't know what he's doing when it comes to his legal problems. And we don't, and we know that he doesn't feel comfortable enough to waive his cl- his trade clause because of the personnel on the Eagles. It has nothing to do with the city of Philadelphia in itself, the fans, the geographical location. It has to do with the roster. Yep. People want to win. <laughs> so if you want to get a Deshaun Watson, you want to get a Russell Wilson, you want to get these guys that are potentially mad or disgruntled with the franchise and Rodgers, you have to put yourself in position to have people, somebody that's going to lure them to us yep. <clears throat> and plan like this does nothing. We're, we're, we're being counterproductive. Absolutely. Um, and when it comes to game plan, when it comes to um, preparedness, forget the game plan. Let's just talk about being ready to play. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do we realize that football is aggressive? Football is combat. Football takes a a mentality that I'm going to go into the ring and I'm the only one that's going to come out. That's the mentality that you have when you're playing a football game. I've watched the basketball games last night and, you know, guys get hit. They get on the ground. The other guy on the other team patting them on the butt when you make a good play. I'm like, man, this is a totally different world that I'm used to. <laughs> football is not that football is 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 aggressive it's grimy it's 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 trench you're in the, it's trench talk you're in the you're in a you're in a foxhole you have to you know do something to get out of there and i don't see that from this team man i don't see the urgency i don't see the grind i don't see the fight like if even if you're frustrated with the coaching staff <laughs> you still should want to fight because of the name that's on the back of your jersey, the people that brought you there. Like, I just don't see the fight. Like, where's our defensive line? Where is – just because you're mad with a play call, that means you just give up? I don't know, you. Yeah. I don't know. So that, that, that's my big picture take, takeaways. There's nothing that's trending in the right direction. No, no. You, everything I, you said was, was spot on. Like, and, then that's, and that's the thing that, to me, that is – and we've talked about it before – you know, with, with the city and just the embodiment in the city, blue collar, like go to work, bring your lunch pail. Like that was always kind of the heart of this team, you know, the underdog thing and, you know, Super Bowl year. And, and it just doesn't feel like that is being preached in the locker room. It doesn't feel like that's being um, <clears throat> focused on in practice. Um, you know, different coaching staff, new coaching staff, but at some point you've got to set the tone for the season. And I feel like it, that that is not it's not set at all like there's no yeah. it feels like there's no direction there's no fire it just feels uh-huh. like god the guys are just going out there and just playing a game to yeah to get paid. it doesn't feel like it means as much as it used to and that's really the saddest part the the scariest the scariest part and, and you know what you got to get a you have to have coaching and coaching staff um that kind of takes on the personality of the city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let me explain that for you guys for you guys that don't know. Pete Carroll at one time was the coach of the New England Patriots. Pete Carroll, Southern California guy, laid back, surfing, chilling. <laughs> Everything is good. You good, I'm good. They don't work in Boston. So <laughs> Mr. Kraft said, listen, man, you too happy. <laughs> Like, we're losing too much, and you're too happy. Got yeah. him out of there first couple of years. Got get him out of there. I think it was one year, but got him out of there. And Miss Kraft said, listen, like, he, he was a great coach, and we thought it was a great hire at the time, but we recognized that he wouldn't match. He, he didn't fit the city's personality. And those, mm-hmm. those are the things that we got to start considering here. I'm not saying that Nick doesn't deserve another chance or anything like that, but you got to have that same grimy, that same blue-collar mentality, and that same – um, you know, grit to you as a coaching staff. Yeah. 
or at least someone on the staff with it. You know? Yeah, you got to have it, mm-hmm. you know. So um, and understanding the, the mentality of the city is very, very important. All right. You know, obviously, the coaches and personnel are both issues. Is there any doubt yet in your mind about the ability that these coaches um, have long term viability? Um, <clears throat> I think I think offensively, I think, yes, um, it's a shame because I feel like the game plan, like watching the first part of the game before um, before uh, Miles got hurt, I thought that the game yeah. plan was pretty solid. Um, you know, they came out, ran the ball. Um, even even after they lost, after they lost Miles, I mean, I still think offensively the game plan made sense, and it's st- it was starting to come together. You're starting to see little glimpses here and there of things getting better. Obviously, Hurts needs to get a little bit better, um, act with his accuracy and 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 sitting in the pocket a little more. Yeah, he's his accuracy is, is definitely subpar right now. Um, but but defensively, I, I don't I don't know, and it's. It's crazy. Um, you know, just really was really excited for uh for you know this new defensive mindset, you know, getting back to the yeah. old days and you know, blitz schemes and, and creativity, and it just it hasn't. And so if it continues to stay this way, I don't think I don't think it's gonna be a good for for Gannon long term. Just you you in twenty in the twenty twenty one NFL. You cannot just sit back in the cover two all day. You cannot just sit back and not take chances of blitzing. You cannot just sit back and let a quarterback pick you apart and have a chance to be successful long term. Oh it's just gosh. not going to happen. Oh it my is. gosh! <laughs> he, Bra- uh, freaking Derek Carr looked like Tom Brady. It was crazy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Fish in a barrel. Fish in a barrel. That's what it was. Eighteen and nineteen. Nineteen for twenty. He ended up with thirty-one for my gosh. It was like. It, it, unheard of for NFL quarterback and just an Aaron throw on the one the guy was wide open yeah just an Aaron throw like that the pressure caused some of that but you know I so here, here, here here's here, here's here's my point to that right I love the fact that Jonathan Vilma called the game I I thoroughly enjoyed Jonathan Vilma calling the game because I knew from your perspective, everything that Quinn Michael talks about on this show was said by Jonathan Vilma doing the game. And basically, he called Jonathan Gannon out the entire game. What is this defensive coordinator doing? Why isn't he aggressive? Why don't he play cover one? Why don't he get more people in the box? What's going on? Like, he, it looked like he didn't see all the games prior to this. And, like, he was <laughs> befuddled and astounded that this is an NFL coach calling the game this badly, right? So – and that's why I appreciate it because it was like, man, I saw some stuff on film, but I didn't realize it was this bad in Philly where, where the defensive coordinator is, is that lacks this uh, much aggression and, and they do nothing to try to minimize the run game and, and, and the quarterback dinking and dunking on you the entire game. You're going to let a dude go 19 for, 19 for 20? Like, mm. it just doesn't happen. He was like, dude, if you don't get somebody in his face, blitz him, pressure him, do something. something. And I just, I thoroughly enjoyed him doing it. Because to me, he put the entire city on notice. And also those that are um, in the media, that he made them aware by just the way he looked at it. He's like, dude, I... Like, I, I don't know what's going on here. Like, I, I don't know why he's not being aggressive. I mean, he was doing it in a nice way. But if you read between the lines, he's basically saying you suck. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. From, from, from the end of the second quarter to the end of the game, Jonathan Vilma, in his own nice media words, said the defense coordinator is lacking um, uh, aggression. He's not being aggressive. And this game plan is trash. Basically, that's what he said. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's it. You you won't be around long with that. Yeah. So <laughs> um that's funny. Like I, I, yeah. I watched I, I watched the game. I watched the game two times actually, and, and you're hundred percent right, man. Vilma was spot on. <laughs> like <laughs> he was spot on. I was like, this is Quentin. Quentin Quentin is <laughs> calling the game right now. <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. <laughs> Like, so when you – like, and, and for you watching the game twice from the defensive perspective, I, I, I have my viewpoint and, I, and I, my main thing is back in. But, um, like, how can we fix this? Is there a possible fix? I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Is there a possible <laughs> fix? Um, 
is there a particular position group that we can like pinpoint or is it just like it's just it's just game plan I, I, i'll tell you exactly what the problem was in that game <clears throat> linebacker Uh-oh. play 100 mm-hmm. linebacker play and not to single him out but davion taylor was getting eight up the entire game it there was a drive i forget i believe it was their second touchdown drive if you go back and watch it every single play they attacked him whether it had been a, a run to the side whether it had been a screen a bubble screen they basically attacked him every single play and some of it was as simple as um, all goes with a flare out from the back, knowing that Davion was going to be in the on the flat on the back on, on the flat. Mm-hmm. And all all David Carr did was drop back, look to see where Davion was, and then just floop, drop it right over it, right over the shoulder of the tackle into the running back's hand. So, to me, the biggest the biggest glaring thing that I saw was linebacker play, which which. Going, that's why I don't like the. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the fifty front for that for that part right there. You got yeah. You got five guys up there to stop the run, but now you have two linebackers that are trying to cover a much much wider space. And yeah, the, the linebacker the, play it, has to be better. See that it's it's the same thing in every level, right? You need you need stacked players in order to stop the run, and you need yeah. stock you need stock you need stacked players in order to cover on kickoff. Right, you don't want everybody running on the same level. You want everybody doing a stunt on the same level, and that's what that five front does, right? Puts everybody on that same level. Now it's harder for the the two stack players to cover more ground, right? So if you mm-hmm. get the third stack player, it makes it an easier, um, you know, easier thing for to to stop the run, you know. But that's just yeah. my my uh, my opinion. But I, I think you're absolutely right. They attack Davion, and um, mm-hmm. and, and to, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, he didn't play well versus the Buccaneers. So, yeah. um, so, so I'm pretty sure that was part of the game plan if he got in there. Yeah, I mean, it was he was David Carr was 31 of 34, and I would I would venture to say at least half of those went to the running backs, right? Um, the 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 tight the um, safeties need to get a little bit back, <laughs> a lot better yeah. actually um, in the passing. I, our corners actually held up pretty well. I thought they did a good job, but they did the well, beside play, a few plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the linebacker play in the back out of the backfield, back screens, like they've they've got to step that up. And yeah, you know, thank God and, Waller didn't play. I mean, <laughs> I t- Moreau, Moreau, I had no idea who that guy was. He was like, he looked like a superstar out there. <laughs> they asked, they asked me, they asked me um, on Inside the Birds, the pregame show. There's like, uh, you think um, Darren Waller is a big deal? I was like, Darren Waller is a big deal. But whoever's playing tight end for them is going to eat. That was before the game. I just I was like whoever's playing tight end for them is going to play really well. Yeah. It's, it's they're simple. Against our defense, the middle of the field is good pickings. Whether it's the running back or it's the tight end. The running yeah. back or the tight end, you get your you get your, your your other plays, big plays by the receivers outside. But your running backs and your tight ends is going to be going to have a field day versus us, and that's what we're seeing yeah. because of the type of defense we're playing. Um, we know that that personnel um, isn't great, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's almost the same personnel that Schwartz had last year, and we weren't this bad. Yeah. All right. So now <laughs> this leads crazy. me into some other stuff, though, right? And 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 to be honest with you, let me let me think about this before I say this. I think the personnel is better than it was last year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you add Steven Nelson, you get Avante back in the slot, you get um Rodney back. My um uh, Epps isn't Epps Epps is Epps he's is solid player. to me. To yeah, me, he's, he's solid. Player. Yeah. He's he's a solid player. Um, you know, I don't I don't think he's a starter, but he's solid, you know. Mm-hmm. Um you you get Hargrave back, you lose Malik Jackson, but you get Hargrave back. Now you don't have Brandon. Right, so you don't have Brandon that, and 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 we we're starting to realize how valuable Brandon is because yep. Brand because Brandon stops the run. Yeah, Brent like he may not get 10, 12 sacks a year, but he always going to be on the team leaders and tackles for loss always. Yep, and you kind of miss that right now because when Absolutely. you start getting when you start putting band aids in there, it, yep. it, it, they don't play the same. Yeah, oh, so it's a different um, ball game. I said it too. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I said losing Brandon was going to be a, a much bigger 
uh, problem than than we all re realized at the time. And and the sad part is it's actually it's actually much bigger than I even thought. Like we even thought on you know, talking on the show, it's way way more. I, I actually t I actually told somebody, and I feel embarrassed to saying this. I telling somebody at the airport, and they was like, "Oh man, we lost Brandon." I was like, "Yeah." them losing him in the locker room is big but i was like production wise i don't think it is going to affect the team that much <laughs> what buddy was i wrong <laughs> guys dog <laughs> i was smoking that Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wrong so wrong <laughs> oh, uh, the um so so and he, here's the thing schwartz as much as you can say about him i don't I believe that if Schwartz had the right personnel, he can call the more aggressive game plans. Mm -hmm. I thought for all the Band-Aid years that he had, he did really well for the Band-Aid um, band defenses he had. You got to understand something. Do you see what people are doing to Jalen Mills right now? That's the same thing they were doing here, but they even doing it worse. Yeah. Did you see what C.D. Lamb did to Jalen Mills the other night? <laughs> oh, it wasn't just that play. He ate him alive the entire game. Yeah. Whoever yeah. was on him, when it, whoever Amari Cooper, like my you know, I think, caught one on. Him. Yeah, he was he was open. He was open to the public. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so what I'm saying is, you start getting Jalen Mills, who was starting on our team here. You got Darby. Look what people are doing to him, like getting run by, like you know before you know got injured. But um, things are, and this is the, this is the defense that Schwartz had, and he was he was putting band aids on stuff. And the thing that you can say about Schwartz is they would get yards, but people didn't score at the rate that they're scoring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All so, of this is all this is for not all of this safe defense is for nothing if you give up touchdowns. Absolutely. <laughs> What's 100%. like yep. that? That's the purpose of being safe. Okay, I'll be safe. I'll be safe, but you won't score a touchdown. That's what the defense is designed for when you're being this conservative. But if you're going to be this conservative and still give up a touchdown, you might as well play cover zero the entire time. <laughs> might as well. Shoot. Man, <laughs> what do you got to lose? All right. Frick. It's crazy. And, so, and you know what the one the one thing is, and, and I, wasn't a, I wasn't a huge fan of, of Schwartz's defense, but – the one thing is he had a plan, he had a scheme, and he stuck with it no matter what. And you gotta admire him for that. Like he he had a plan, he, this is what his plan was, this is what his defense was, and he stuck with yeah. it. it. Just it just feels like right now we're just just pulling different stuff from all over I, the place. I'll tell you this. The reason I respect the Schwartz. I've got a chance to sit down and talk to him. The man knows defense. Yeah, absolutely. He he knows defense. You put you put a front in, you 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 put a, a formation in front of him. He's gonna figure it out. He knows defense, mm -hmm. right? Now, does he have the personnel to stop every defense? No, no. But when a game was on the line, I knew one thing that he wasn't going to be sitting back in in something. I'm not talking about a third and 15. He tried to set, play safe on that, but you don't, you don't suppose a blitz on that. You just play regular defense. You don't have to play the sticks defense. But if it was, if it was third down and four or fourth and two, I know he was going to blitz. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. This guy here, I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, here we go. Um, why would a DC play Josh Sweat, Derek Barnett, Cox out of position? And why would you pay Josh Sweat this amount of money and don't let him roam? Don't let him free. And that's the frustration that you're hearing in the locker room a little bit. There's a bunch of guys. You got Kerrigan, who's Washington's, you know, all-time sack leader. There's a way that he got to the quarterback. I can't believe. A man that was productive last year just automatically fell off the face of the earth this year. You can't make me believe that. I can't mm -hmm. believe that he just got that old that fast. Yeah. It's like the movie on the island where they were where they, where they were getting old real, real fast. It came out <laughs> a couple of years ago, a year ago. Like, no, it doesn't happen that quick. Yeah. Th this. What's your, what's your thought on this? Uh, I have no idea, to be honest with you. Like, I would love to 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 be able to sit here and and try to give a, a complete answer, but the the only thing that I can come up with, and I've been thinking about this all day, 
the only thing I can I can come up with is it's just a, a defensive coordinator being rigid, um, saying this is my system, which whatever it is, um, we got to hold the gaps to gapping. And if you don't like it, too bad. I, I have no other I have no other way to understand it. Like this is this is a perfect example of the whole scheme versus player thing that we always talk about. Well, it seems like right now he's not building the 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 defense around what his players can do best. It seems like he has this scheme and he has this idea and he's trying to like fit these these pieces into the scheme and it's just not working. And so yeah. some of the best offensive def- some of the best coaches in the world are ones that know how to adjust their scheme, adjust their offense, defense, whatever, to their players. Yeah. And also vice versa. You got to be able to do both. And and so, like, to me, I think that's really what the, the saddest thing is that, is that, like, it just seems like coaching-wise, defensively, he's like, you know, Gannon's like, this is what we do. You got to do this. Not, okay, coach, we can do this on maybe first, second down. All right, I can play a gap in first, second down. But when it comes to third down, cut me loose. Let me go. All right, what's wrong with that? And so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to chalk it up to being a rookie DC, but time's running out, man. We've had, you know, it's been seven games now. You got to figure this out, right? Well, so I agree with you. This is where I differ. You ever ask someone a question that didn't know the answer, but they were your superior? So you ask them a question, mom or dad, they didn't know the answer. And instead of saying, you know what, son, let me get the answer to that and I'll get back to you. They get frustrated with you that you asked them a question and they felt like they were showing up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so they get, they get kind of snippy with you <laughs> because you asked them a question. Because yeah. they may feel like you're trying to undermine them. And the, this is what it feels like to me. It feels like a coach that may not know the answers. And when you don't know the answers, what you, the only thing you can say is, do what I say. Mm. Or yeah. this is the way we do it. And there's no adjustments because I don't know the inner workings of how it works. Or I don't, I don't have enough information to be adaptable. It's a totally wow. different thing. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. What you're saying is true that there's rigidness, but maybe there's rigidness because he doesn't have the tools in the toolkit in order to make this defense, you know, thrive with the personnel they got. Because that's what happens when you when you get so caught up in your scheme, your scheme, your scheme, your scheme, you're fitting you know, triangles into squares. You're trying to fit in circles into triangles. You're trying to make stuff work that is not, right? So rather Mm -hmm. than just using the pieces that is, but you have to know the pieces and know the game inside out in order to use those effectively. And I don't think that drafting or not drafting, hiring a young coaching staff around the board helps you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to have some, 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 some age, some experience, some, some experience, somebody that was a defensive coordinator before. Yeah, that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that he, that John, that Jonathan Gannon can't be the defensive coordinator, but why don't we have a defensive consultant like Wade Phillips or somebody that knows some stuff about defense? That hey, coach, that one right there ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. Or, or even a linebacker coach or, or, or someone. My linebacker staff. coach is 26. Yeah. How much football has he seen? I'm not saying that he that he doesn't know, but he's 26 years old. Yeah. That's frustrating, man. It really is. Yeah, Back to what so, you were saying earlier, though. Hold on. I got to tell you this story because <laughs> I, I had a parent moment like that. So my one of my sons, my oldest son, he, you know, he's not doing so good in one of his classes is physics, right? So I'm like, come on, man. You got to get your grades up. <laughs> And he's like, well, can you help teach me this physics? And I'm like, um, <laughs> we'll get you a tutor. Because <laughs> I was coming at him hard, like, yo, you better get your grades up. Let's do this. He's like, it's it's physics. Do you know physics? Can you help me out? 
show me how to do this. And I'm like, yeah, let me let me slide on out of this one. <laughs> so yeah, that's you, how it is. That's the exact, exact situation. That's the first thing that popped in my head when you told me that. <laughs> that <laughs> that's funny. Physics. That's I'm funny. Physics guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of guys mm-hmm. in here that's that's uh, like that right now. That's what it feels like. And we seen with Fletcher Cox, right? Fletcher Cox in his comments about yeah. you know he's not getting paid to cover screens. He getting paid to get to the quarterback. Yeah. Now I don't agree with him completely, but I get what he's saying. His his number one priority should not be to have primary gap responsibility every single time, and yeah. you know to 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 be passive. And that's what this defense is: is passive. It's wait to see what they're going to do, and then we react. You can't play football like that. They've been accustomed to a defense where the defensive line is full throttle. They pin their ears back. They don't think about nothing. They think, uh, you know, they, they rush into the shop. They ask questions later. You know what I mean? That's it. They, yeah. they, 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 react, they react to um, anything but the past last. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's the way they've been trained. So I understand it, um, how frustrating it is from Fletcher Cox and, and, and Sweat. And trust me, listen. If Fletcher feels like this, everybody feels like this. Yeah. yeah. When have you guys known Fletcher to be disgruntled in the media? Yep. I and haven't that. seen it. I haven't seen it. Mm-mm. I've seen Mm-mm. him in the media for some stuff, but not disgruntled with play calling. Yep. You know what I mean? Just don't don't happen like that. So um I'm and, pretty sure that that he's the only one because he's a hundred million dollar man that has the 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 cojones to say something about it, but he's yeah. trying to get their attention. It's weird too, like some of the not to get too into the X's and O's, but even just watching the game, some of the defensive fronts they were using made no no sense. get in get get into the X's and O's, but yeah yeah go ahead just defensive fronts yeah like they'd have a four man front they'd have you know Fletch Fletch. And the three technique outside the shade of the guard, but then they'd have the the weak side nose tackle and the two eye, which is inside shade of the um, yeah. of the, the the guard on the on the weak side. And then instead of having the end, they put the net they put the end and the two. So they had basically two guys covering the guards. Yeah, and 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 Josh Jacobs can run yeah. right around the edge. Yeah, it, it made it. I don't know what they were doing there. It made no sense. And I could see the frustration because just me, I'm just looking at it. I'm just looking at it like I'm trying to figure out what, what was the purpose of it. The only thing I can think of is they were maybe they were worried about pulling guard. I have no, I have no idea. It was it was really odd. I'd never seen anything like it. And um I could see I could see as the game went on, you could see the frustration building in that defensive line. You could see them almost to the point where I'm not going to say they were giving up, but it, it was almost like they were – like it was just a waste of time. They're, they're, yeah, they're out of position. Like that's the thing. Like you have to be in position in order to, in order to make a play, right? If yeah. I – if the if, – if, if, like we talked about last week, if I have 22 men the entire time and the coach keep calling slants, at some point I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get mad and curse the coach out. Yeah. Or I'm going to get a penalty because you're not giving me a chance to win. Yes. Because his job is to take away the slant the entire now I may be able to beat him one out of one out of three, four times. But if I beat him that one time, he's never gonna get beat again. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. that player, he not not the same thing. No, not not in that coverage. Like so you know, it, it, it's weird. It's 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 like trying to, you know, you know, throw scene balls in cover four. Yeah, the safety should pick it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's I, you know. yeah. It's frustrating and weird, and so so so. What I'm saying is, after at some point, the coach, the coaching staff can make a, a a knowledgeable player scratch his head and be like, "Dude, we're you guys are dumbasses right now." And that's what I feel like Fletcher saying is like, "Dude, dude like, <laughs> what is this? I, I, listen, you want me to I, do what? Listen to me, and 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 this is this is funny here, Q." I know what Fletch is feeling because I was there when Chip Kelly transitioned. <laughs> and Bob Big Nail, or I don't know if his name, but it's Bob. He was an offensive line coach 
tight ends coach and then first year ever doing receiver coach or was with us. And the stuff that he would tell us to do, I would literally have to turn my back to stop from laughing. <laughs> so <laughs> you talking about a guy that why, I listen, like I, I used to grab tapes. I used to grab, you know, Larry Fitzgerald, Heinz Ward, Reggie Wayne, uh, you know, and then I had old school tapes. I had Jerry Rice's one on one tapes, all of them. Um, Webster Slaughter's one on ta- one on tapes, all of them. Like, pe- like just sitting there watching film. Like in college, I would just sit there in my off season, just watch like old school NFL players and try to mimic their their movements and stuff. So I've seen enough about receivers. I'm not saying I know everything, but I do know that what he was telling us was some baloney. <laughs> and it was so bad that when he would say something, the entire room would look at me like this. <laughs> like can you believe this hogwash <laughs> and uh oh. <laughs> after about the third meeting I, I called a meeting up between the receivers I said listen you little mom <laughs> listen, <laughs> don't look at me when you say that stupid shit. <laughs> you're gonna get me fired <laughs> Oh, that's funny, man. <laughs> Don't look at me, man. Don't look at me. You're going to get me fired. And uh, sure enough, they got me fired. I, I, I blame it on them. <laughs> oh, but I, I, I say all that to say that it's very, very hard for dude at Fletcher Cox's level, not only like his level mentally, his level yeah. athletically, He's been at the top at his position. Him and Aaron Donald, he's not on Aaron Donald's level because Aaron Donald is so much faster, so much explosive. But he's been in the upper echelons, that top five guys at his position for the last seven years. Yeah. So he knows what he's talking about. So if you come incorrect, it's going to be some frustration. And he owes it to his team and to his position group to let let you know about his frustration. Now I don't I don't think that it should be out in the open, but he I'm pretty sure if he said it there, it must not be able. Um, he must not be. Um, it must not be hitting home inside the practice facility. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree, man. Yeah, Derek Carr, Derek Carr, thirty-one for thirty-four. That's the way I said thirty-four or something, but thirty-one for thirty-four. Um, the only thing that you can do differently about that, Q, and I just – only thing you do differently about that is put pressure on them. That means that you have to blitz. Yep. And that also means that you got to press people every now and again. And yep. when, you, when, when you get a guy that's getting that hot where he's completing 17, 16, 17 completions in a row, you have to disrupt the timing. Mm-hmm. And the only way you can disrupt the timing – is to get after him with the pass rush and bump press those guys so they're not just running free. Yep. That's the only chance of getting in completion. Yep. He's all he lets you know by completing 16 passes, 17 passes in a row, that your defense is water. <laughs> that it's a paper bag. And I'm going to continue to do this at a high level if you don't, if you continue to go down this path. I'm not going to change. And he didn't. All the way to 31 completions. Let me let me tell you, and then to add to add insult to that. I don't know how many times I watched. Uh, it could have been every pass play. They released the back every single pass play. We five out, you win. They Dude. got five out. Versus a four man pre- four man rush, no blitzers, nothing, right? Yeah. And he picked you apart. 31, 31 of thirty four with five five out. That means he's not protected at all. That means at if all. you sent one, like if you sent if half the time you sent the blitz and covered the back, there is he has nowhere to go because outside they covered well. I think for the most part there was a couple plays that they gave up. It's a couple one the, the one was, deep the one deep one yeah Slay was yeah. money. Slay was money, and you know you get what you get with with Nelson, but you know, and then the tight end uh, had a had a pretty good game. But with five out, even if you bring just one linebacker right there, 
you know, one in the middle, one off the edge, something. Cover the back. Like, you just – you. that was – it was like seven on seven. That's it's, what it was. It, that's what it seven. makes it. You can allow somebody to run scat protection versus you the entire game. You just can't do it, right? You can't, you yeah. can't, like, you can't, like, you're usually going to run a five man protection the entire game. Just, just my offensive lineman is better than your guys and everybody can get out of there. Like, no, you just can't. If you can get five people versus seven, you're going to win as an offense because one guy is all the way in the back at the back somewhere. He, he's never going to be there and it's going to take, trust me, you get five <laughs> people out, you're going to win. And that's what we always knew. And we never could keep five and not in this division. You can never get five out. Never yeah. could with, with the with the pass rush. Never. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> all right, cute, cute. Let's get into DraftKings. Let's get that DraftKings read, cute. Oh yeah. Got there a new we read go. This week, we got a new read. <laughs> Listen, man, the NBA is back, and that DraftKings Sportsbook, an authorized sports betting partner of the NBA. The key to victory is a strong starting five. New customers can bet just $5 on any NBA team to win their game. And if they do, you win $200 in free bets. So why not make your roster Washington, 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 and oh yeah, Washington. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get skin in the game with the new same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings is a, is safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code ITB. Bet just $5 on any NBA game to win their game. And then you win $200 in free bets. If they win, you win with the promo code ITB. This week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an authorized sports betting partner of the NBA. You must be 21 and older. Pennsylvania only, new customers only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Ooh, that was get, that press right there. Check you yeah, out. Man, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm about to go in there and give me some some bets in my uh, in some NBA. I feel like Take it, it. is it me like I the do. NBA started earlier than normal. Dude, my bulls are back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Heat fan. Are you a Heat fan? Yeah. How's that happen? Is that LeBron or just used D Wade uh, back he, in the day? I was a huge fan of um Tim Hardaway back in the day. Oh. You took two step man before. Listen. Listen. I don't know. Chicago. I get I get ragged on all the time. I'm a huge fan of them though. Tim Hardaway is my, my guy though. Listen, you listen, man. You're a man after my own heart, man. Tim Hardaway and I went to the same high school. We used to play. We used to play in open open gym together. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. We went to George Washington wow. High School. Yep. Okay. So, and, and, and when I say just just a Tim Hardaway story, Tim Hardaway talks more trash than anybody that I've ever seen in my life. He's a complete <laughs> trash talker. Like I used to guard him when I was in college, so I'm in way better shape than him. I can run up and down. I, he's like backing me down from from the baseline because I knew if he got a shot off, he would get he would hit it. So mm -hmm. I was sticking from end to end, and I would foul him and everything. He would hit that <laughs> shot from half court, and it, half court was a little bit closer, right? So it was probably like a 37 foot shot, 35 foot shot, like what Steph Curry shoots, um, all on his arm. Yeah, you little mother, you can't stick me. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and one. <laughs> I don't care if you play in college and you strong. Like, you should be like, yeah. <laughs> Tim hey, Hardaway was with it too, like that. Man, Tim Hardaway was gangster. Like, yeah, he, <laughs> he was gangster. Yeah, and That's like, awesome. so that, that same run would be um, Larry Fitzgerald had some family or something in Chicago. And um, he was running up there. And that's how I realized, like, because we were in college. Um, no, I was in college my senior year, and he, I think he was in his first year in the pros. And um, he was there for an open gym. When I say this dude was catching all type of dunks, like, it's he, oh my gosh, out of the gym, like under the legs, all type of stuff. Like, it was nuts. It, it was okay. bananas. Can yeah, he shoot, so. though? Can he shoot? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> But he didn't have to, because yeah. you play when you play in the old man leagues in Chicago, everybody can shoot. So yeah. you know, you just pass the one, and they shoot threes on half, um, 
on uh, fast breaks. <laughs> all the young dudes come they don't down. Go, they all of you, all the young dudes come down dunking on them and crossing over to, before you know it, it's nine to three. Like, you know what I mean? Or nine, you know, or whatever it is, or nine to six, you know. And the game just keep going because they shoot all threes. Yeah. I so, rarely go inside the key when I hoop, man. I don't go down there no more. It's too much, too much to, to, that can happen. Too many knees can get blown and ankles. I stay outside. <laughs> All, All, right, right. All right. All right. So we're going to do this Manscaped. Support for the Q&A show is brought to you by Manscaped, the champion of the world for men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, and they just launched the fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard it right, 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code QA at manscaped.com. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. I've tried the 4.0, and I'm blown away. The craftsmanship and details are second level. Nobody wants to get hurt down there. You know what I mean. So Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer has a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces those accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. You got to be comfortable down there. This upgraded trimmer also has a multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock and has a 4000K LED spotlight that can turn on and off for more precision on your shade. The new lawnmower even allows you to customize your trim with guard lengths sizes one through four. How about wireless charging? Their new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction to help the battery last longer. Men. You can't use the same trimmer on your nuts and face. Nobody needs pubes in their mouth. Get your own hair and ball trimmer with Manscaped. Make me time the best time, like Jason Avant always does. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code QA at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code QA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off. With free shipping at manscaped.com, use code QA. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And your balls will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I good, used it. Man. I used it the other day. <laughs> All right, so let's get back <clears throat> on topic here. We're gonna we were gonna go through some linebacker situations. Um, let's let's talk about the, the 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 thing that matters the most. If Gannon can Gannon get this fixed, yeah mm -hmm. or nay? Linebackers, personnel, scheme, all of that's falling on him. How can he fix it? Can he get it fixed? Is it possible? I think it's possible. I think he can get it fixed. I. I don't the there the problem is the the middle of the field has always been a huge issue for this this organization to address it but there's ways that you can you can fix it you know you can manufacture pressure which we always talk about but honestly I think the biggest a big the biggest thing that that needs to be fixed if they're going to continue to stay in this this type of a system the two things that he needs to do he he's got to start bringing more pressure he's got to start taking more chances and we've said it multiple times and until he does that we're going to keep getting the same thing so that's number one you got to start getting some kind of pressure some way and that's that's got to be through blitzing and you're just going to take some chances and number yeah. two number two the the linebacking core they need to get in the film room extra time on their own, watching tape and understanding how teams are trying to attack them. And I actually, I would say the whole back seven is they need to start watching tape after practice together as a group and go through all their drops and understand. Because it really, if you were playing the same, which they are, they're playing the same defenses all the time. It should they're be a the same, the same route concepts. Do you know in the red zone, what most of the teams that I've seen last few games, they keep giving us the stack look. We've blown that coverage multiple times, especially in the red zone. We've given up two or three touchdowns in the red zone. We saw it again in the Raiders game. And so the back seven needs to get together and watch tape together as a group, talk to each other, talk out everything, um, 
talk out the five release and backs, right? If the back releases, Davion, I got him in the flat. Okay, corner, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay high. Or oh, well, we're in the cover two, all right? The, the back releases, um, corners got him in the flat. Um, safety over top. If if it's a if I got a post route and I'm in quarters, all right, I take him. Like I'm if he comes across across my face, I'm taking him. Right corner, I go. I yeah. gotta fly high. So just little stuff like that where it just feels like this group isn't very cohesive. Like they don't. It doesn't look like they're all on the same page. Every game, it seems like there's there's some kind of mistake that's going on, and and it's really a simple answer. It's just get together and watch the tape together. Yeah, that right there, Q, is is befuddling because you're running the same defenses. Yeah. <clears throat> you're running the same defenses, and when you start getting the same route concepts, you start to, even though, even though, you know, you know what used to be frustrating as a receiver and as an offense is when you know play should work versus the coverage that they're presenting as a defense and they don't work because one of the guys know the weakness of the defense, so they're going to show the defense, but he's going to lean toward that side that has the problem. And you know what guys they used to do with the corners. So if yeah. they're in cover three and the corners are playing in between two and three or between one and two, it was a pain in the butt because mm -hmm. they knew they had a weakness there. So you see a guy that used to be lined up head up or outside when the ball is snapped, he started moving in between one and two, and now he's ended up playing two guys, and it's hard to make that completion down the field. Yep. Right, because they begin to overcompensate for their weaknesses. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's frustrating for an offense. So, but as a defense, I mean, as the defense, you have to know where your 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 defense is vulnerable. And that comes with film study. Yeah. So now it's not just the film study though, Q. Yeah. Here's why I think you need to improve. You need a player, man. Or two. You need a player or two. Free the, yeah. the, the, the deadline is coming, trade deadline is coming. We need a linebacker. We Get do. us a guy that can play. Yeah. Get us a guy that can play. How about one, that? One one person can make a huge difference. Get us one player. Yeah. Get get us a player. Get get us somebody at linebacker that, that know this game, that can play this game, that can run around and that can make a play, that can take some pressure off the D line where the D line doesn't feel like they have to be perfect up front. The D line yeah. literally has to be perfect because they don't feel like the linebackers are going to make the play behind them. Get us a guy, man. How about that, Coach Staff? Yeah. Get us, get us a guy. Ooh, That'd be great. I, I, get, get. I would love a guy. I would love a guy of um in in the middle, and I would love a guy on the edge because our edge pressure. Oh my gosh, where has it yeah. been? Yeah. Where has it been? Is it Brandon going? We've seen too much of Ryan Kerrigan. Yeah. I don't know. You know someone that I don't know that. I, I know people, he's already been here. I know people don't uh, particularly, I don't know what, what anyone's feelings are, but someone like Michael Kendricks, you know, he's, I think he's in um, San Francisco right now, but a guy like that, you got some experience, you can still run, you understand the defense because he's played in a similar defense. Yeah. <laughs> that can understand the game. Like someone like that is, is who they need to bring in. Someone with some experience, someone with some athletic ability, someone that can hit and has played this game at a high level in the past. And, you know, he, he's probably a lot cheaper than, you know, someone you know, someone like, uh, you know, Warner yeah. or someone like that who we wouldn't ever be able to we, get. We but, wouldn't be able to get, yeah. But that type of a player is, is someone that we need to find in this in this linebacking core. We need, we need something. Yeah. And we need a fast. Yeah. So th that's what I think. Y yes. To fix it, be more aggressive. You got nothing to lose, coach. You're giving up 40 points a game. You give them a 400 yards of offense a game. You, you, what, what do you have to lose? They're still scoring. Be aggressive and make somebody uncomfortable. How about that? Do something that you've never done and get something, some results that you haven't had. Do that. Yeah. These results, the, 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 this play style, it, it doesn't equate to winning. It doesn't. And like I said, at the beginning of the year, this play style can turn your players off because oh, yeah. they begin to see – that you're that you're coaching scared, mm -hmm. and that you're being passive. That's not a mentality that you want to reflect onto your players. We talked about early in the season, Q, when they were doing it in the preseason. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and we're starting to see that disgruntledness from the players starting to resurrect his head. And this is only the beginning. You're going into a boxing match with one glove on. I mean, yeah, 
That's what it feels like. Yep. All right, let's all right, let's transition offense. Yeah, let's talk some offense, man. <clears throat> all right. Offense isn't any better. <laughs> all right. So so quarterback situation. How what have you seen from Jalen Hurts? Mm. <laughs> Listen, we got to listen. Listen, I, I've been trying my best to give him the benefit of the doubt. I, I've been doing everything that I can to try to get to, to just keep the faith when it comes to, you know, a young quarterback. He's going to grow. He's going to learn. I'm right there on the edge, though, Q. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm up there like 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 um, what's the movie? Um, the Titanic where they were all <laughs> like right on that. I'm right right there right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it jay don't do it <laughs> i'm up there like this yeah right there right now <laughs> uh, man, I, feel you. I, I you know I'm, I'm i'm the same same boat as and he's a guy that you just you want him to succeed he's got so much ability he's got so much to like about him that you just want him to succeed um and it's just not it's not coming along um it's not coming along right now. And we're not doing offensively, you know, game plan wise, we're not doing them any favors by, uh, you know, refusing to, to, to run the ball and, and create an offense that's built for his skill set. He's shown some glimpses. He's shown some good things. But overall, he's got to be more accurate. He's got to be better reading in the pocket. And he's got to understand when when the pressure is real. And when it's not, meaning yeah. there's sometimes that a, a guy might flash in your face or you might feel it, but it's it's not real pressure. You're not in danger of getting sacked versus, you know, when there is a real pressure or there is a blitz. It's almost like when there's a blitz, he's trying to stay in the pocket more. And when yeah. there's there's maybe a guy gets a little bit on the edge, he takes off. He takes off when he can, when he can just ship, when he, where he can just, you know, shuffle left or right. You know what I mean? Yeah. His pocket presence isn't isn't, um, isn't yeah. there yet. Yeah, and it's really frustrating because there was some there were some guys open. There's a lot of potential big plays out there left on the field this last yeah. week. Q. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, so here we go because I want to deal with this two ways because I want the listeners, everyone that's that's viewing it or listening. I want you guys to hear like my mindset and my heart behind it, right? I'm going to get to Jalen Hurts, but before I can get to Jalen Hurts, it's bigger than Jalen Hurts. This here is catastrophic abandonment to me. Like, I think that this is intentional. In that, yes, everyone has to be able to sink or swim in the National Football League, but you don't have a guy that clearly needs development. You knew that he needed development. You did not draft him as a guy that was playing right away. Wentz was already in the first year of his contract when you gave him a lot of money. So you did not draft this guy because you thought he would be the starting quarterback day one. You drafted him as a developmental player or a high, uh, a high end backup. You didn't want to pay the 12, 15 million dollars that backups are making. You can get that at a lower salary. So use a higher draft pick. Maybe you can turn that into a better pick later on. So with that, you knowing all of that background information, what makes you think that this kid can be able to operate a game like Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees or Phillip Rivers or Tom Brady without a run game? What makes you believe that a guy that you view as a backup, a backup quarterback or high end, potentially in the future, that's going to be able to just put this team on his back and make all the throws at this level and at this state. This here is an organi uh, or organizational failure. This, this here is from the bottom. I mean, from the top to the bottom. It's not the other way around. I'm not going to start with Jalen Hurts. I'm going to start with the mentality of just totally taking Miles Sanders out of the season, not just out of a game, He's been non-existent the entire season despite averaging over four yards a carry. Mm. You've literally taken him out of the game plan. Kenneth Gainwell is over four yards a carry. Everybody's over that. 
but we take the running game away from a guy that needs it most. Yeah. We've seen Lamar Jackson and what he's able to do. Lamar Jackson doesn't didn't throw the ball well his first year, but they relied heavily on the run game. He passed it when he needed it, when he needed to, and it wasn't a big deal. But now you're exposing this guy's flaws in front of the entire world, and you knew they were there. You knew he had those, and that they weren't um, ironed out just yet. Mm. Now let me get to Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts isn't accurate enough. Jalen Hurts isn't aware enough of defenses and schemes that are being run against him. Yep. <clears throat> he, because he doesn't know what he's looking at, moves too quickly at the wrong time, just like you said. Yep. That's because he doesn't understand what he's looking at yet. Some guys get over that, some guys don't. I don't know which one it'll be for him. I'm hoping that this, I'm not going to call it a tank job, but I'm going to say that this, I'm going to call it abandonment. Or you can say, we're going to see if he, if, if he, if he's the real deal or not. Hold on. You didn't, we haven't did this with any other quarterback. No, <clears throat> no, no other quarterback has, has gone through no running at all. That's crazy. <clears throat> so this he's completely inaccurate right now. He he he's inaccurate. Like they were calling drops by Devontae Smith that were not drops. I want to kick the kick the other guy in the teeth for <laughs> key. He are he two drops. I'm like, man, shut up. He didn't have two drops. <laughs> like that ball was in the dirt. He was trying to if 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 he would have just looked at the ball, you'd have been like, oh, it's a bad throw. But since he tried to catch it off the shoot tip fingertips, it's a drop. Like, what are you saying? Yeah. Like, no, I used to hate people like they, you know, credit me for a drop like that. I'm like, dude, I'm the only person in this stadium that's going to try to catch this ball that's 50 feet above my head and get flipped and, 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 and trying to catch it. You're going to call it a drop? Stop playing, man. <laughs> oh, man. So Devonta, so Devontae Smith, could he have caught a few, um, caught, caught the one that was behind him? He could have caught, but it shouldn't have been that far behind him. Yeah. And it's been, it's been every week. It's been Zach Ertz on overthrows. It's been last game. You got an eight-yard <clears throat> stop route at the beginning of the game, Jalen Jalen Rager. Um, Devontae Smith has been, been overthrown, underthrown. Jalen Rager, underthrown, pass interference. It, it's on and on and on. It's eight, nine, ten times a game. Yeah. It's getting worse, too. It's getting worse. So he so he's not he's not playing well. And he he isn't at this point. Seven games in does not look like a starting quarterback in this league. I'm not saying that he can't rectify it, he can't change it. But as of right now, he isn't looking like a starting quarterback. And I wonder, was this a test year for Jalen Hurst to see what how he can throw it? And I think that would be so wrong, wrong to see. If your plan is to get a guy like Deshaun Watson, and you're saying, "Do I need to? I need to. I need to test um, Jalen's um, ability if he can throw the ball to see if we need to go go after Deshaun Watson more." That's the wrong approach, the wrong mentality. You don't damage a guy's confidence and career at this stage. Yeah. At this stage, I'm not talking about a third, fourth year player, fifth year player. I'm not talking with Carson Wentz that's that's got paid a hundred million dollars and then you know and and we got everybody in the world that wants to baby Carson Wentz. I'm talking about literally eleven game starter mm. that that they've completely abandoned and made him Tom Brady and 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 has to be a, it's not even his strength right now. I'm not saying he can't change it, but it's not his strength right now. So I just don't like it. I think that it was a setup. That's what I think. I, that's yeah. what I think. I that's think what it, it feels like. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the only so, that's the only logical explanation for for what this is. I mean, it, <laughs> it's not it's not that difficult, right? It, yeah. You got to run the ball. You got a young quarterback. You got to run the football. You got to create some type of a running game and help yeah. him out. 
I mean, gosh. Mark Sanchez went to, went to four NFC championship games doing it. Yeah. Or AFC championship games doing it. Four of them. But even but even guys like, <laughs> like like Peyton Manning, you know, Tom Brady, like all these great quarterbacks, they had running games early to help them develop. And it just yes. and I agree with you hundred percent. Your analysis is is spot on, is that it's an abandonment. And it's completely frustrating to watch. Yeah. It. Yeah, and I understand everybody out there is like, oh, he, he has to prove he can play, he got he has to do all that. I get that. And what you're saying is one hundred percent true. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is that usually it does not happen this early in someone's career. And I believe that it happened because the ownership wants to see if we need to pursue another quarterback outside the organization. Let's see if Jalen can sink or swim. I think that this was the wrong way to do it, to take away the run game from this guy at this stage in his career, because you are having long term um, ramifications for this. You have you draft him at a second round pick. And now this guy may never see uh, get a chance to be anything valuable towards you and your organization later on. Because if everyone um, believes in just what he's showing right now, what, what type of pick do you think you're going to get from him? Yeah. For him? Mm. What do you think you're going to get? What, what, what do you think is going to happen? It's not benefiting you. It's not benefiting him. This was just um, – it goes right along with, with another, you know, or, organiza uh, organizational failure with that the Eagles have been going on. Um, it, it is. So that's, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Let's keep moving. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Minshew's number two now, Jay, um, the Flacco has been traded to the Jets. Any, <laughs> any thoughts, comments? Uh, uh, Minshew may be playing, man. Yeah. It's yeah. only a few, it's only a few games away from Minshew playing. Yeah. If it, if it continues down to this path that it's been, we'll, we'll probably see Minshew here pretty soon. Yep. And, uh, you know, I'm not, so I can't say I'm excited about about it. I mean, I don't really, I didn't really watch much of the Jacksonville games. I know they didn't Min win a whole lot. So, well, Minshew, Minshew can throw it. He's exci He's an exciting player. He'll, mm -hmm. he'll. The Philly will love Minshew. Yeah, Philly, Philly will love him. They, they'll, you know, the, the Birds fans will will love him. He'll provide a a, a nice initial spark. And everyone will be excited and get happy again. And but before you know it, it doesn't lead to wins. You know what I mean? So <laughs> because because he's still a young player that makes mistakes as well. Um, but but he but he throws the ball way better than Jalen does. He's yeah, just does. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and he gets hot, he's streaky. Yeah. So um first drive, Jalen's under center. We move the ball right down the field, seven nothing right away. Um was that – do you think that was helping Jalen's development or you just think that was game plan, scheme? Um, why couldn't they sustain that? I, I think it's just – I think that was game plan and scheming. Um, you know, yeah. you script the first 15 plays, you kind of have a feeling of what the defense is going to be in and you kind of um, predict what they're going to be in. You run your plays and, you know, the the, the – the thing with the first 15 is like that's it's all scripted. But then after that, you got to now it's coaching. Right now you got to try to figure out what they're doing. And I think um, as the game went on, we we I don't know, we went away from it. Uh, it could have pro probably because because um, Miles was injured. Yeah. Um, you know, that probably took a lot of steam out of that um, game. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't really built to to run behind 12 personnel right now. He's still, you know, young and learning as he goes. But um, I wish we could have. I wish I really wish that Miles wouldn't have went down because I think I think this would have been the opportunity to see what this offense could be with the running game. Like, with the running game, I think yeah. once once he went down, it the the coach and staff, the the offensive coordinators kind of panicked and then just said, "Okay, well, what do we do now?" Yeah, and, they they yeah, and that's a frustrating thing too. It's like you you gotta you gotta plan, you gotta you gotta you don't ever want a game plan for a guy being hurt, but you also have to be able to adjust on the fly. And I don't think we adjusted well to it's losing you, miles. You know what's so funny is that like every run play. And for those that don't know, when you get a game plan, every run play usually – there's very few runs that come in one personnel grouping, meaning 12 personnel where there's two tight ends, a running back, two receivers. Um, 
usually can run that that same play out of zebra, which is three wide receivers or eleven personnel, mm -hmm. or you can run it out of twenty one personnel. Like every play can be designed, and that's what you know doesn't make sense to me because these plays can't just be twelve plays because if Miles goes down, now they turn into eleven plays where Quez Watkins is on the field. And it fits the running style of game well a little bit better, right? So that's the adaptability and being able to change. Um, they did give game well a few few plays, but once you once you're down 100 points, it, it doesn't matter about the game, <laughs> right? It's not time to run the ball. <laughs> you know, you can't. You, yeah. So yeah. It, what can you, like going for my? Yeah, what can you do? My Miles is out. Um, I think that they're going to feature. I think they're going to run game well way more than they ran Miles. That's what I think. Really? You think so? I, I think they like. I think the writers. I think they like. I think they like game well better than Miles. I said. It, I said it. I'm not one of the first ones to say it, but I'm probably am. But I think they like game well better than Miles. That's what I think. When I'm that's, watching the game, I that's what I think. I think that they like Kingdom game well better than Miles. Hmm. There's no, no. There is no. There is no way that this man has had the type of explosive plays that he's had over the last three years. And you don't give him the ball as much as any other running back in this league. Yeah. You just don't. I'm not leaving a game if he's not touching the ball at least 15 times every game. Yeah. And I'm trying to get it close to 20. But we don't want, I don't want to play a football game and Miles Sanders not carrying the ball at least 15 times. Mm. I, won't, I, I don't want to play offense like that. So that's the thing that's that's just confusing me. So then that that becomes we were taking uh, over and unders on Miles getting eight or nine carries in the game. You know, wow. just just me me and some friends of mine. Like <laughs> you that's know crazy. what I mean? Like it, it shouldn't happen. So like that's on purpose. That's uh, a I'll, you, I'll, you're I'll, purposely I'll, I'll, putting your team at a disadvantage by not giving one of your best players the ball. That right there in itself could, should tell you enough. Yeah, and we're not we're we're not trying to put that out like put that in in the coach's mouth and say we knew yeah. that. that's what it does feel like. I, I I felt the same way. Like we're all everyone's saying the same thing. Why is he need giving the ball to Miles? <laughs> Some and things don't matter. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. It's frustrating. I thought. Well, let's let's. What do you think about Dallas? Do you think? You know, as as tight end number one now, you know, you moved up into the number one spot. How do you feel about him and how you play it? <clears throat> Not many balls. We yeah. thought that this would be a breakout game for him. You know, there was a lot of people who was like, oh, it's going to be a breakout game for Dallas. Jalen Hurts don't throw the ball in the middle of the field. There is a stat line that says that Jalen Hurts throws the ball the middle of the field, he's like ranked like 30, 30 first or 32nd out of, out of all the quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks, at 2.8% of the time that he throws the ball over the middle of the field. 2.8% of the time. That's crazy. In comparison to the like the leaders, that's like 12% of the time. Right? So, and, and, and a lot of people will say that's the easiest throw on the football field. Physically, it is. Mentally, when there's a lot of bodies in there and the hashes are tighter and it looks like there's 15 people on the football field and it's hard for you to understand what you're looking at, it's a much harder throw than what it leads, it leads on to be because you don't trust, you don't know what you're looking at. You don't know if this guy is, is dropping out from the defensive line. You don't necessarily know if the safety's rocking out of the sky because you're having trouble seeing it. So you're not comfortable with throwing the ball with that many people. Let me take the throw that's a lower percentage throw, but it's easy for me to see that maybe the goal ball on the outside to Quez or to Jalen or to Devontae Smith. The one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's a harder throw versus a better defender out there on, on the corner on the receiver, but it's the one I understand. Mm. So Dallas, Dallas Goddard doesn't get the love and the shine because of the inability of Jalen Hurst to recognize his defenses. Yeah. And so I didn't did, think. When, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. And when he did, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say when he did get the ball, they were on on um, nine uh, seven routes. Yeah, seven. Routes, yeah, yeah. And which are outside it, throws. <laughs> they outside throws. It's not over the middle. It's away from it's away from you know where he should be being um what more what where, where Jordan uh, what did I say Jordan Morrow 
wherever his Moro was, I think it's Jordan Moro, wherever he was and whatever he was doing, that's what we should have been doing. <laughs> whatever he was drinking, we should have been drinking it because he was killing us. Foster. Foster Foster, Moro. Foster Moro. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Dallas had five targets in the game. Three three catches, 70 yards. Just got to be more. Got to be more. Yeah. Well, he he gets he gets his um like I said, some of them are late game, yeah. late game games out of reach, you know. So, yeah, it is what it is. I I I thought that he played well for what for what he was given, but in the in the in the when the game is is being decided, that's when he needs the needs the ball, yeah, and over the middle. Um, right. are you concerned? Are you, oh, go ahead. Did you wanna? Are you no, concerned no. with um <clears throat> with um Yannick, I can't ever say his name. Nago, Nago, Nageku, yeah, and Max Crosby's um play, like they killed. Well, I, I won't say killed. Yeah, they, 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 they were, they were dominant. Um, Jordan Malata, like uh, he, he couldn't, he couldn't stick in front of Yannick. He just could. Yeah, especially the um, first half. Jordan, no. Jordan was struggling the first half, and he, he got a little bit better in the second half, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. He was getting he was getting tore up. He was getting it. <laughs> he was he getting just, it. He just got he got paid, man. Like this, don't don't start that right now, right? You, you got paid, then then you you got hurt. You out for a game or two, and then you come back. And it's not just that, man. But he moved from left to right tackle to left. Like that type of stuff is not easy. Very true. Very true. But he it's, was it's he's just, at back at left tackle the last game though. He's back at his normal position. I know what I'm saying is, is that, but after after going back to right tackle, then going back to left tackle, it ain't. I'm just saying it ain't, it ain't that easy. And then you're playing against one of the, like, look, you're playing against a very very strong player. You got one of Nigerian strong yeah. players out there, a little a little different strength out there, yeah. <laughs> right? So we know that you're strong, but that's a whole different ball game. And uh, you know, and 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 you you're going to like, there's going to be players that that um that may have your number yeah i remember one time alden smith when alden smith was young and when i seen him hip toss jp oh my god oh my gosh i was like <laughs> i've never seen jason peters get done like this not yeah. in his prime ever i've never seen him get done like that and alden smith when he was young and he was me he was out there giving JP the blues. Oh, yeah. He was giving the blues, and I was. And, and sometimes you get that matchup. Hopefully, it's he's that type of matchup for Jordan Malata. The good things is is that he's an AFC. You only see him, you know, once every four years. So um, that may be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, everybody has that one. That one guy, and and, and, Lane, guy. And, and and to be honest with you, like if you if if you just judging everything, Lane has had some 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 down games. Yeah, he just he's. I'm not saying that he's playing he's playing bad consistently, but he's this year and last year he he's had some up and downs. Yeah, I know he's yeah. he's got some stuff going on. So some personal stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's let's answer these few questions and let's take this home. All right, go ahead. You add you on the um. Yeah, I'll go with this one. Let's see. William W. All right. So he says, bad linebacker personnel is nothing new. Are are they being coached at all? Um, is this all is all of this about coaching? And this and he says, same with Jalen. Is he simply being set up to fail? Well, we kind of covered both. We kind of answered that one. Yeah. 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 We kind of covered. Yeah. Go ahead. But um, yeah, I mean, the, just really quick to kind of hash it out or to summarize it, you know, the 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 personnel isn't what it should be. Um, I think that they're being coached by a young um, a young linebacker coach who probably hasn't seen enough um, and got enough experience to really uh, know what to to show them. And I think that they need to get together as a group and watch tape, watch more tape, and understand their their assignments. And then, um, you know, the same with Jalen, um, you know, we kind of talked about the situation yeah. that he's in and, and it, it does feel like it was set up. Um, he can overcome, but um, not by himself. That's, yeah. you know, I, I, it's kind I, of I got of nothing it. to say. You said, you said it perfectly. Yeah. What, what can you say? <clears throat> All right. So let me read this. Should the Eagles trade for OBJ for veteran leadership at, 
First of all, I'm a <laughs> hey Chad H. You tripping, Chad H. If we tra- you tripping, buddy. Listen, if we trade for OBJ, it won't be for veteran leadership. I tell you that <laughs> right now. It is because he's a playmaker, but he's not a leader at all. I don't care how old he is. He's just not a leader. Mm-hmm. Not at this stage of his career. He's not a veteran leader. That none of that. He can be a veteran playmaker that people can admire his work ethic and his play and his production, and they follow him from that standpoint. But a veteran leader, uh, I don't know. I didn't like the I didn't like the way that that question was set up. But yes, mm. I would love. I ultimately I would love to have OBJ. <laughs> but, oh, <yeah. laughs> whether he lead or not, I would love to have him. He but but check this out. Let me let me ask you a question, Chad. You think OBJ want to come to Philadelphia? <laughs> if I'm OBJ. I'm telling my agent, telling my 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 knees um, are bone to bone, and, and I don't think I'm gonna make it another year or two. Tell anything, <laughs> tell them anything. You the dog think, ate man. the the dog ate my homework. Um, <laughs> you know something. You know me and my girlfriend having relational. Just use mental health, OBJ. Do anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offense to those that, that are really deal with mental issues. <laughs> you don't think he'd come though? No, he could be yeah. the he could be the star. He could be the 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 man Cute. here. Cute. <laughs> Hell to the no, no, no. <laughs> Does he want to come here? Oh man. man, stop it right now. Oh. Receivers like OBJ and guys like that know that your quarterback can get you to the Hall of Fame. Your quarterback can get you to the Super Bowl. Your quarterback can get you to the Pro Bowl. Did you hear anything from Jordy Nelson when he went to the Raiders? Very true. You you hear anything from, from Julian Elliman once Tom Brady left? Very true. A lot of these guys are contingent upon the quarterback. And OBJ already has a subpar or average quarterback right now and we have his production is down do you think he wants to go with no obj trying to get to seattle that's why i'm mm. trying to go give me uh-huh. seattle give okay. me get give me to, to a contender give me give me over there somewhere fair enough right. yeah i see what you're saying so we have no chance <laughs> it's it, it's a trade it's a trade, Q, so anything is possible, right? He doesn't have a no trade clause in there. You can't trade me, and I dictate that as the player. You can't, but what I'm saying is if I'm OBJ, make up any excuse in the world <laughs> so you don't have to come. Like, I'm talking about from his perspective. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> Would I enjoy him coming here? Yes. Is he going to win anything with this roster? <laughs> Hell to the no, no, no. It's just not happening. <laughs> oh, man. My heart, my heart. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You want to ask me the last question? Let's get uh, out of here. Yeah, this is a good question. This is, uh, again, from Chad. He said, you know, for Jason, I'm a Muskegon, Michigan. I'm from Muskegon, Michigan. Michigan. Mm-hmm. And the U of M, and U of M is my second favorite college football team after the Oregon Ducks. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, weird weirdo. <laughs> What made Bray, Braylon Edwards dominant when you guys played for Michigan? Oh I man, that's I remember him. <clears throat> that's funny. I actually got a call with Braylon Edwards um because he's doing like a um he's he's doing some uh some media in Detroit. So we got a Michigan State call um on Friday. So um what made Bray, Braylon was just a supremely like talented athlete when it comes to just athleticism, a guy that can stand up and do 10, you know. Um, you know, backflips in a row without touching his, you know, putting his hand, uh, what, what we call a note backflip. Like he would do all that stuff. He, you know, windmill between the leg dunk. He was just a supremely gifted, like athlete in that fashion. He can jump really high, run fast, all of those things. So that's what kind of made him dominant um, during that time. He was just a better athlete than most. And he had really good down the field ball skills. Uh, which the coaching staff at Michigan used him for that. They had me for underneath and they had Steve for the grease man. Like I call it grease man, the guy that runs all the screens, bubble screens, specialty plays, trick plays. That was Steve Breston. I was the serious, the serious guy, game on the line, middle of the field, need a slant. That was me. And he was the big play guy. So it worked, worked, worked um, really well. 
So, um, but he was just better. He was a, he was a more talented player than me and everybody else around. Um, he's probably the, he's probably, he's probably going to go down as the best college receiver in the big 10 and, and, and for right now for the history, like from la especially the last, the last 15 years, last 15 years, Brandon Edwards college career won't be top. Yeah. Yeah, he was phenomenal. I remember in college, it was crazy. Yeah, then he went. Yeah, to the, he went to the Browns. He went to the Browns, and and uh, his his pro career his pro career was was cut kind of short just because of um, you know it's kind of hard. Like some guys, it's it's hard to you're at the pinnacle of of college football when you win the the Fred Bolitnikoff at the University of Michigan. Your your career is made. Right. So it's kind of hard to um, desire more success than that. It's, it's very, very hard to. And I think that he got caught in that trap where, mm -hmm. you know, um, it was very, very hard for him to look at the NFL in a serious light in comparison to his notoriety at Michigan, because he's going to be taken care of forever just because of what he did at Michigan. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So Good that's where Michigan. we are. We're going to miss it. We got, we got, we got Sparty this week. We gotta take it to him. Oh, you said you gonna, you gonna, you gonna uh, call Ike and talk some trash to him. Ike listen, Reese. listen. <laughs> if we win, I'm definitely gonna call Ike. <laughs> Guess who this is? We still own you, little brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for the game, man. Get to check yeah, it out. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. All right, let's get off and let's sign off. Q. Um, to everyone that that um, tuned in to our show. Thank you again. We have so much fun with you guys. Continue to send your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Thanks again to Adam and to Hunter and to Josh and everyone, uh, or I said Josh and Jeff, um, everyone that's uh, responsible at, at inside the birds. Uh, thank you guys. And to um, everyone's tuned in. Thanks again. Jason Levant signing out. My main man Q has the last words. Well, as always, man, I enjoyed it. Had a good time. And uh, can't wait to do it again next week, man. Uh, thanks for everybody right. for watching and appreciate it. Peace.